Episode 18, and we want to thank our beer sponsor first and foremost, and especially for having the biggest and most local beers that we've had yet for the sponsorship. So this came from Vegas Apparel. Um, they started their, they launched their company earlier this year. They wanted me to make sure I told everybody they stand on the shoulder of giants because they are just pushing the Las Vegas brand. And then they also um, are working with some of the best uh, companies for designing clothing and hats, which is what they specialize in that there is, and their uh, goal is to increase camaraderie in the city and bring awareness to how desirable of a place this is to call home. And you won't find them in many stores. There is one place you can get them in real life, which is in the emergency arts, um, but uh, in the, it's in the Get Up Gallery. But really, lvcaps.com is where you guys want to go and thank them if you see them around for buying this beer, because this is awesome that they went local for it. And I'd love to see that on the podcast. So thank you to yeah. Vegas Apparel. I appreciate it. All right, so let's just hop right into the uh, news roundtable. And I want to start with Jennifer Sanchez. You're going to talk to us today about the uh, Reset Project, right? Yes. All right, go for it. So the Reset Project is a group of um, passionate, healthy, driven individuals um, who are working to help Las Vegas be a more healthy, conscious, living community. Um, so our signature event is the Sunday Reset, and we get together the first Sunday of every month to reset our minds, our bodies, our spirit. Um, it's composed of five different components. So we move, we do either a walk, a run, sometimes an indoor uh, body weight class. We stretch, show people how to recover from that movement. We act, which is a little bit of insight that you take back and then you can act upon it and incorporate that into your life based on our theme. Okay. We meditate, we'll take a quiet uh, minute to yourself to live in the present, and then we eat. And we usually <laughs> have a, um, a vegan Chef Donald has been doing our food, um, so it's a catered brunch, and to help people see the power of plant-based um, foods and teach people how to live <laughs> healthier lives. Um, and we have different kinds of events also planned for the future. Um, we recently did a spring brunch as well, so sometimes we take those different components and break it down just to an eat or just to a move. Um, we have another June barbecue planned as well. Okay, so June. Yeah, yeah let people know what, what they can get involved in and where to go. So you said June barbecue. Yes, Next June, thing? June barbecue um, on the 28th. That's going to be at Downtown Third Farmer's Market. And then our Sunday reset, the first Sunday of every month. Okay, um, and you got a website too, where you can read this, right? The yes. Reset Project LV .com? Yes. Okay. And then we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. All right. Beer okay to drink or no? Go for it. Once, <laughs> you know, once in a while, it's okay. Right, you gotta have balance, right? Yes. Okay. No, I've I like been to the Reset you Project with the green, green smoothie. <laughs> no, it's really fun. Like, um, their logo is a power button, and I have a power button on my neck, so like they had this close up of my tattoo on one of their yes. photos, and I was just like. Oh, Guys, I had this first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the Neon Museum. Yeah, Neon Museum. Yeah. It's a it's a really cool project that they've been working on for a while. It's a nonprofit, and it's over it's spending over two acres downtown, and um, basically it's 150 signs, like retro signs, starting from the 1930s, spanning on that you get to see all like all the classic neon Vegas. And it, they do tours, and I highly suggest that people go check it out. You can check it neonvegas.org, I believe. Um, but it's, it's really interesting to see, you know, old school Vegas and like, I mean, I love the signs. I mean, that's, you know, a Vegas thing. Right, like, right. Vegas is neon and you should definitely should check it out if you get a chance. The tours are amazing. Steve, have you ever been down there? Checked out the neon? I ride my bicycle past all the time on the way to the library down there. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. You don't get blinded? No. No, okay. That's good. <laughs> all right. So this is Steve Wainstead. He's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, what's happening with Vegas Give Camp. Vegas Give Camp will be happening June 20th and 30th down the street at Work in Progress on 6th Street. Uh, it'll be the first, the inaugural Vegas Give Camp, uh, and we plan to do it every year. Uh, Give Camp as an idea started about six years ago, and the idea is you bring uh, the technology professionals in, in the area together for a whole weekend and literally camp out. They can bring tents and camp for the weekend and build solutions for area charities and nonprofits. 
uh, we are gaining momentum very quickly. I mean, getting a great, great venue, like work in progress, and a big shout out to Zach Ware for that, because right. he's real, totally behind the project from the beginning. Uh, but we are getting uh, signups very quickly now. Uh, VegasGiveCamp.org is where okay. you can go to uh, fill out for either tech volunteers or if you're a charity and want to apply. And uh, if you're really impatient, you go to Ticket Cake and just sign up at the ticket there, and that's the short way to do it. Yeah, that's great. And then, so how did you get inspired to work on this project? What's the passion behind it? You know, uh, Owen Carver, who is the co-founder with me, uh, hosted these meetings over at UserLib, and they were called the User Share Meetings. And his idea was to get community leaders together and just try to see what would combust. And John Hawkins, who runs the WordPress meetup, was sitting next to me and he right. said, how come we don't have one of these events in our town? He was referring to a different one, but I knew of Give Camp because friends of mine in Cleveland had done that. And so I said, yeah, why haven't we? So it just was born there in user lib and we ran with it and, you know, registered domain name, set up a website, got a yeah. venue, <laughs> and now it's, you know, now we're just trying to ride the bull as as, hang on as long as we can. Now it's VegasGiveCamp.org for everybody to go to and sign up. So, all right, Steve, well, I appreciate you and I appreciate you coming out and uh, talking to us about this. And I think now we're going to move into the uh, interview section. So thank you very much. Hear that, Charlie? That's all for you. <laughs> all right, so we're here with Charlie Kemper. He is a software architect tur turned web entrepreneur, finance executive, a nonprofit promoter, relationship developer, and current tech media investor. Charlie is based out of New York City, and he's worked with disruptive technology and media companies for years, and we're going to find out more about what he thinks new disruptive technologies will be coming up here in a minute. He's currently the co-founder and general partner at Entrepreneur's Roundtable Accelerator and a managing director at Revel Partners. Previously worked at Steelpoint Capital as a venture capitalist focused on software and media, and he attended Northwestern University and has lived in San Paulo, Mexico City, Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and now Manhattan, and if Elon Musk has anything to say, maybe Mars could be next. <laughs> Knowing that string, you know, you got to stay on it. But uh, let's talk about your accelerator to start with. What are you looking for in the uh, startups that come through your accelerator? Uh, we look for companies that will thrive in New York City. So similar to Vegas. Uh, Vegas has a ton of attributes that are fantastic. New York City has a ton of attributes that are really interesting. We, there are anywhere from six to 12 different industries headquartered in New York from fashion to fintech uh, to media publishing and so on and so forth. Uh, and we look for companies that can benefit from business development with those companies locally. So if we can help startups thrive in that ecosystem, make connections with them and execs at the NBCs, MTVs, uh, city banks of the world, uh, which maybe will help them accelerate their business, uh, that's the kind of stuff that we look to invest in. Right, and you know, you, during the pre-interview, you really surprised me with how many developers there are in New York. Just because of the intense density, I wasn't really thinking about just how incredible the, the volume of developers is, right? And um, I mean, we talk a lot about high density around here. It helps with collisions. What, uh, what are you doing to pull all those people out and, and turn them into real value producers as far as the tech scene goes? So it's, it's, it's happening, it's coming in twofold. One, uh, kids who are graduating college uh, who are CS majors or who are looking to be programmers uh, have a variety of choices they can go to. But New York is obviously a awesome place to hang out. Second best to Vegas. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, so if you're a 22-year-old kid and you want a cool place to live where you can walk around and ride your skateboard and, and, uh, um, and work for a cool tech startup, New York City is a mm -hmm. fantastic place. Um, two, twofold, there's, you know, there's a lot of disruption in the traditional industry. So financial services is kind of upside down and not doing so well. Um, the traditional media publishing industries aren't doing so well either. Uh, and all the tech talent that was locked in those two segments is looking to find okay, yeah. other Sounding sectors released, to work. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're at places where they can grow and, and there's opportunity for upside. Okay, well then, uh, we talk a lot about the uh, disruptive technologies you've worked for in the past, but what, um, in 2013, do you see as the big disruptive technologies, and you think those guys are going to fill that need, the ones so that are released? I, I love when people ask investors that question, because I have <laughs> no idea. Oracle? Right. <laughs> um, and any investor who answers that question uh, is probably lying. Because if I knew I wouldn't be an investor, I'd be starting that company. Right. <laughs> um, 
uh, you know, we're seeing some pretty cool stuff around um, our, 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 our latest cohort of companies is uh, in a variety of different, tackling a variety of problems in a variety of different spaces. So uh, one area uh, that we see a lot of opportunity is in, is in taxes. Uh, if you, uh, a lot of states are broke and, and, and looking for ways to collect taxes or collect more taxes. And so um, with the rates of audit going up, uh, we recently invested in a, uh, a tax software solution for enterprises and, and individuals. A uh, company called Moneo. We uh, recently invested in an ed tech startup, so we think there's a lot oh, yeah. of opportunity in education. I think so too. Um, yeah. Businesses that are selling uh, not only direct uh, to students and parents, but also through the school systems, uh, which can be challenging at times. But our country's in dire need of, of better education systems and software and services. Um, and the student is moving faster. A lot of kids now have iPhones, and so yeah. schools need to catch up with that. What's going on with global technology, Okay, So that's something we talked about when we were doing our pre-interview. And you seem to have a good grip of what's going on like throughout this entire world, really. Like, And I wanted to maybe hear what you thought maybe startups could learn from that. Like, Is there a new surprising place they should outsource or anything that might help uh, tech companies? Yeah, I mean, so, so uh, I got in the venture business in 2000. Uh, and I actually, my very first fund was a Latin American-focused fund. So I lived in Washington, D.C., and I traveled once a month to Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. Uh, and we looked for startups, and we would invest a million dollars in startups in those communities. Um, one to two million dollars. And one thing uh, that those startups had to deal with is that they were pretty much selling locally. Uh, they would build locally, and they would sell locally. Um, and something that's happened in the past five to ten years, or five to six years, really, uh, had been the advent of a couple of things. One, the cloud. Uh, two, Facebook and, and, uh, and LinkedIn. And three, uh, things like Skype. Right. That's really flattened the world. So Tom Friedman wrote the book Lexus and the Olive Tree and a handful of other globalization books. But I think technology has really brought all of us closer together. Right? Twitter made communication instant. Uh, YouTube makes video communication instant. Um, and so what those allow are really, for the first time ever, truly disparate organizations. So through the accelerator, we have uh, recruited companies uh, from across the globe to build front offices and headquarters in New York where they can have people doing business development with those industries I, I mentioned earlier, uh, but leave product and R&D in whatever country they're originally from, yet maintain a really low cost form of communication with uh, their head of engineering or their head of product that may be 3,000, 10,000, 15,000 miles away. Right, and, uh, and so the thing behind that is that the development is so strong outside, but then kind of the business dev is so good in New York, that's why you try to connect the two and keep them separate? Right, so the, tradi right? the traditional industries are, you know, the U.S. has been the dominant country for the past 150 years. So as a result, a place like New York City is a, is a mecca for large enterprises. Um, and development talent is everywhere. It's in New York as well, uh, but it's in Vegas, it's, it's, it's in Utah, it's in, it's in Mexico, it's in China. Right. Um, and you never know where that talent is. Uh, a lot of that talent sticks together and works in pods and scrums. Um, but business, at the end of the day, is conducted in, at least business to business, is conducted in certain metro areas. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. if you want to be gotcha. in the advertising business, you kind of need to be in New York. That's what you're saying, yeah. Because that's where all the agencies are. That's where all the media planners and are. And with the fast pace of connections, why not separate them? And right. put, you know, the places where they need to be, put the people there, right? right? So if you're a really good hacker and you want to live in Florianopolis, Brazil, might as well live there and work for a company based in New York yeah. uh, as long as you're disciplined enough to communicate properly and, and deliver product on time. It's a great, it's a great way to, 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 to have distributed workforces. Yeah, that, yeah, that's really interesting. I, that really brings up different thoughts in my head, too, about how maybe a company does, doesn't just set up headquarters in one place, but they really do specialize pieces of the company in separate parts of the world as kind of this global economy emerges, right? And there is opportunity. Yeah. There's opportunity everywhere. Um, but having pods of people in different parts, you really get to pick the best of best and brightest of everywhere. Right. Um, and and to, to assume that everything can be found in a certain geo is a false assumption. Right. There's, there's great talent everywhere in the world. Okay. Well, what do you think about uh, what you've learned about downtown Las Vegas so far? I mean, do you kind of subscribe to this sort of collisionable um, universe and this ecosystem? And have you found it to be what you expected or something different? I took a tour of Zappos this morning, uh, and okay. it was uh, arguably one of the coolest office tours I've ever been on. Oh, um, good. Yeah. It was a really neat culture. Uh, I'm not sure if it was set up. It felt kind of set up, but the tour guide got high fives from everyone that walked by. Uh, <laughs> Do the shake weight thing? You it, see that? It, it yeah. felt a little surreal. Um, uh, uh, but it was really neat to see that. Yeah. And, I think, and I think Tony's done a fantastic thing 
in helping revitalize downtown Vegas. Uh, I lived in Detroit for a brief stint uh, 13, 14 years ago. Right, yeah. Um, and I know what it's, it's like to try to rebuild a city. Um, and I think it's really cool to have a culture of entrepreneurs mixed with small business people, uh, mixed with creative talent, uh, who really want to make a place a, a better place to live and yeah. to work. Um, and I think what I see in Vegas is pretty powerful. Okay. Um, it's really neat to see. And do, do you know the accelerators that are the people that you let through your accelerator? Do you talk to them at all about culture? Do you bring in somebody else to really guide that process, or is that something you have a passion for? We are. Uh, it is not something that I focus on. Okay. Um, most of our companies, as they come through our program, are anywhere from two to eight people. Um, so culture is sort of pretty embedded in what they do. Um, uh, as they grow, that culture evolves. Uh, you know, employee number 9, 10, 11, 12 can really have an impact on the company's culture over time. Right. Um, we try to keep a fun-spirited culture. Our, our logo, the Entrepreneur's Roundtable logo, is a massive rainbow full of colors. And okay. We, we have every color of the rainbow <laughs> spectrum in our offices. Um, and so we try to have a vivid vivid act, mm -hmm. you know, vivid active environment within our environment within our workspace. I got you. Well, we go all the way to infrared, so you got to be careful. <laughs> you never know. All right. Well, is there anything you'd like to leave everybody with? I mean, do you have a, like a call to action, a website you'd like people to check out if they're interested in learning more about your accelerator? Yeah, absolutely. Or we're, we're at ERANYC.com. That's ERANYC.com. Okay. Um, we have backed companies that have come from all over the place, companies from California, companies from Florida, companies from Brazil, companies from Guatemala. Uh, and we have yet to back a company coming out of Vegas, but uh, I look forward to maybe one this yeah. summer. <laughs> you never know. We're growing like crazy around here. So, all right. I appreciate you coming on the show, Charlie. Uh, Thank we'll you very you much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Food lovers should check out the sauced food truck outside Work in Progress on, 20, on the 24th between 11 and 2 p.m. I was going to make a joke about their item, Big Easy Balls, but I suggest you taste their delicious, small, and unique dishes yourself. <laughs> After that, our <laughs> I'm sorry, just, you know, I read the menu. <laughs> After that, our local Moxie Maven, Alexia Vernon, will be hosting Step Into Your Moxie Mastery, an event with inspiring women speakers to claim their space on the stage and share their stories. It will be held on Thursday, the 25th, starting at 6 p.m. at Craig P. Kenny Law Firm. Our very own lovely Jackie Jensen will be speaking there as well. Be sure to register on TicketCake.com. On the tech side of things, the new tech tour is hitting Las Vegas on May 2nd at the 20, or at the, at the Innovation Center. They're shedding light on awesome tech companies, having beer with the movers and shakers in the community as well. They're currently accepting applications from startup developers, hackers, or anyone that wants to show off their stuff. Sign up on TickyCake.com. Now, if you don't have anything to show off, you should sign up for uh, Startup Weekend. It's on the 3rd um, of May, and you can take a crack at this 54-hour frenzy from creating your business model to coding, designing, and checking out your market. The weekend culminates with presentations of all the products in front of local entrepreneurial leaders. For more details, check out lasvegas.startupweekend.org. Now to come full circle, we have Chef Cass here to talk about some awesome stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Food for awesome demo at the downtown third farmer's market, huh? Yeah, we have that coming up next Friday. OK. We'll be creating some awesomeness. 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 All right, well, tell us about it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, well, I just drink <laughs> my unhealthy <laughs> beer. Yeah. It's, it's all good. It's you know, a there's beer. a place for everything. Our, our, our concept is about intentionality, right? So we don't label foods as good or bad or right or wrong. All these, there's a lot of morality and, and like guilt tied up with food. And we don't right. focus on that. Um, the concept is food for life performance, which, yeah, another way of putting that is food for awesomeness. So our, our concept is that there's an optimal state that everybody likes to function in. And that can be different whether you're at a podcast or at the gym or just hanging out with your friends or drinking a beer. And there's gonna be a slightly different state for each of those things, but all are related to what you eat, what you're putting in your body. So it's not to say one thing is right and one thing is good, it's just gonna have specific tangible effects and help you get into that state you know, no matter what you're doing. Okay, and then so I see some of your, you wanna talk about some of your goals, your mission statements, like what the- Yeah, I mean, yeah. We, we're focused on increasing the world's AQ and if you're not familiar with that, that's the awesomeness quotient. Okay. You know? so, Good. 
Okay, get your Do AQs food. up, everybody. All right, so let's yeah. give them some URLs, some things to check yeah. out. You've the, got the Chef website, Cast. The website is uh, www.chefcast.com. We actually just got voted the world's leading website in awesomeness. Oh, nice. So just in case you were One more point that. up. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I appreciate that. Okay, and then what's the next thing somebody can take? So uh, we, we offer a few different David. services. Our, our main service is private meal delivery. We're working with professional athletes, um, the most elite poker players, doctors, lawyers, but even, you know, like non, you know, superstar level people or people who aren't at that level yet. Um, we've actually worked with some people in the, the downtown project as well. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So check it out, everybody. Chef Cass, K-A-S dot com. And uh, that's it for episode 18. So you want to cheers your uh, healthy energy water, oh, you know? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Yay. Episode 18. I appreciate it. Downtown Project. Hey.